If you're trying to take the data from the front end of a website, there's a good chance that you're gonna be doing it wrong and you're not gonna get what you need. Modern websites are made up of a front end and a back end system, and it's the back end that has all the information, all the data on it that we want. So why would we make a request to the front end when it's the back end that's actually got the data? Well, to work this out and understand, we need to talk a little bit about how a modern website works, including using cores, which is the cross origin resource sharing. So the front end website that we load up in our browser is pretty much always JavaScript, whichever framework is most popular at the time, probably. And what that does is you go to the page and it will use something like Ajax with Axios or something like that that will make a request to an endpoint on the back end of the on the back end website, which will be completely separate, that will then send that data to the front end. So then it will be displayed and rendered properly. So for for us, the end user. So what we want to do is we want to be able to go straight to the back end and get the data. But you see, it's not going to allow us to do that unless we pretend that we are coming through the front end of the front end through cores, which is generally going to involve a cookie. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through an example that I've done here. I'll just show you the code now. And I'm going to tell you about why I've made some of these decisions, what they mean, and also how you can take a cookie from loading up a headless Chrome using something like Playwright, Playwright in this case, and then we can send it to requests so we can actually get a new cookie every time that we wanna do this because cookies do expire. Before we get to that, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes ready to help you explore your creativity and inspire you. If you have a specific skill that you're trying to learn, or maybe you're like me and you like to utilize the breadth and depth of classes to help you with the other parts of personal growth to support your side projects. This week I've been watching Creativity Unleashed, Discover, Hone and Share Your Voice Online by Nathaniel Drew. Nathaniel is a YouTuber who I am very familiar with, having followed online for several years now, and I was very excited to take his class. I believe there's great value had to be had in watching and learning from someone who's out there creating and making stuff every day, and this was exactly that. So the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below or my code John Watson Rooney will get one month free access to Skillshare. So once again, click that link in the description below or my code John Watson Rooney and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. So let's move over to the actual website which I've got here and you'll see that when you load this up for the first time, especially in private browsing, it tells you you need to accept cookies and this is very common and this is exactly what we need to do so i'm going to hit accept all it's going to load up the page and it's going to have all the information on now you'll see that here here's the list and it's all done in a nice fancy way so you click on it and it loads up more stuff etc etc we're all familiar with how these websites work what we're going to do is we're going to go to the inspect element tool and go to the network tab try and make this a bit bigger hit reload and we're going to see that the front end is making requests to the back end for the actual information. There's quite a few here, but what I'm going to show you is the page data. Let's move this out of the way here. Move it over the cross. So you can see that in this one, we have these specific headers that we are uh, requesting that with our request headers and the response headers, these ones up here. And we can see that the actual response and even though in this case it's been truncated and I will come back to that, actually has the information from the website that we are after. So what we wanna do is we wanna just make this request ourselves, but it's not that simple because we need to uh, obey the rules of the cores across origin resource sharing. So we need to have a cookie so we can actually mimic this and be a part of this. Now in my previous videos, if you've watched any of those, I've said, just copy this copy it as curl and we'll use Postman or Insomnia. And that's great and that works, but when you actually get to the point where you need a new cookie, you have to make a new request. But what I did is I, met, I did copy as curl and I opened up Insomnia, which I've got here. And what I've done is I've just been through the header section, this is the request, and I've ticked out all of the ones that I don't think that we need, except for the cookie. And when I run this, it will take a second because as I said, this response is quite big. On the opposite side, which is just hidden by my head, let's move that out of the way, you'll see that we get this neat uh, JSON data with all of the information that we could possibly want. Now this is the information 
that the back end is sent to the front end part of the website, which has rendered all nice and neat in here to show us this. And you can actually click through and every time you click on a person's name, it makes a new request. And this is its own endpoint, but we're still using the same cookie. So if you wanted to do that, you could actually expand on this and get the information from each one of these as well. So let's go back to our uh, insomnia or postman or whatever you're using. If I untick the cookie and tick everything else, for example, so we just have the, we don't send the cookie. So you can see here's our cause and everything like that. It's basically all of the information that's being sent over. If we send this, we get this blank page and that is basically the response is there'll be some JavaScript in here, which insomnia is not loading up, telling us that we need to have a cookie or need to accept the cookie or something similar. Okay, so let's unselect all of these again. Do, do, do. Click the cookie back on and then run this now. We're gonna get all the information back. So this is the main header that's the most important one. This is what's identifying us. What I like to do from here is just to use I, uh, my uh, API tool to actually generate some code for me. And you can see here, because I've only got the cookie header um, selected, that's the one that's come back out. And this is the one that we need. So as I said before, we could just use this code here exactly and paste it into VS Code or whatever, and this would give us that JSON data. But as soon as this cookie expires, and that's different for different websites, this will no longer work. So we needed to make it more repeatable. And that's where we're gonna use Playwright to load a browser up. So if we go back to our code, you'll see here that I'm using Playwright to load up my Chromium browser, and I'm asking for the context because the context is where the, the cookie information is. So if we come back to one of my working files, so this is just the Playwright part, let's uh, move this over here and I print out the cookie contexts from, from Playwright, you'll see that it loaded the browser up and that's because we needed to do that and I've got this in headless is true uh, is false at the moment so I could see what's going on. But you'll see that we get this dictionary back with all the cookies, with all the headers rather, and this is the one that we were interested in. Um, and this should be very similar to the one that I was passing off into requests. So we wanna take this out and then move it into requests. But why I wanted to do that was because of the actual size of the JSON response that I was getting. So if you're trying to do this on a different site and the actual response that you're after for JSON is not that big, you could just stop right here and then get the response.json. But because the actual JSON file that we're getting back from this website has so much information, you can see it's super long, it was too big and it was causing my playwright to fail. But that led me on to pushing the cookie into requests, which I think is quite valuable. So we can go back to it here and we can see then, I'm taking the cookie for requests and the cookie context, number three, which was the third index of the list, we're grabbing the value. I'm taking the code from what our um, insomnia had generated, we can see that the cookie is in this format here. And this is specific to requests on how it's gonna be sent over. They're just formatted slightly differently. So all I did was copy this into here and then used an F string to add in the actual cookie part the, with all the information that I was getting back from Playwright. And that means that we can then use the same cookie and we could have a session in here if we were going to want to make the other requests like I showed you. Uh, down here, these ones with all the extra specific information, we would use a request session to use the cookie, the same cookie over and over again. From here, it was just a case of then printing out the JSON and I've specifically indexed it down here. Uh, this is actually the, all the information. So what I liked about this was using Playwright to do one thing, grab me the cookie and then pass it off onto requests to then use it so we could actually make that request. So if we didn't have the cookie to send through with requests, our request would be failed like I showed you when we were doing it in Insomnia. So I'm gonna put this code in the description down below for you to have a look at and have a play with. But what I was trying to show you here is that if you're trying to get data from a website and you're getting it, trying to grab it from the front end and it's a modern website, 
you really want to try to put your efforts into grabbing it from the back end directly uh, using the cookie that you can grab this way or from the actual request you made in your browser initially if that works for you. If you've enjoyed this video I think you're going to like this one here which goes into this method in a slightly different way but more in-depth coding it out so that might be more useful to some of you.